And so we began to, to write out vision statements for each one of these five words. You can go to that next screen, Winona. And you'll see here that these are the five core values, the voice of the Lord, transformation, empowerment, family, and harvest. This is kind of what makes our heart beat here at Vision Church. Um, and it really wasn't until later that we were sitting around the table as elders, and all of a sudden it dawns on us that these five core values actually come out of our core scripture that Christian International was founded on many, many years ago, which comes out of Ephesians 4, 11, and 12, which says, God gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. And we realized then, at that point, that our five core values actually directly correlated with the five-fold ministry gift offices that are talked about in Ephesians chapter 4, as you can actually see on the screen. You can see that the voice of the Lord speaks of the prophetic, transformation speaks of the apostolic, and on and on. I do want to say that, you know, up probably 35 years ago, there wasn't really an open revelation in the body of Christ that there still were modern-day apostles and prophets. How many of you were raised in a church that showed you a pastor, showed you a teacher, an evangelist, but they didn't talk much about prophets and apostles, right? So we've actually been living in a place of history as God has been restoring to the church, to the body of Christ, all over the world, the understanding that there are still modern apostles and prophets. As a matter of fact, Ephesians 2.20 says that the apostles and prophets are uh, the foundation of the church, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. And so over the last 50 years of the last century, we actually saw God restore a full understanding of the fivefold ministry. Back in the 50s, it was all about the evangelists. It was all about healing tents and healing meetings and evangelists that traveled around the nations holding big crusades. So we saw God restore the ministry office gift of the evangelists. Then in the 60s, we actually started seeing church growth. We started seeing the Jesus movement start to happen, and we started seeing an emphasis on local churches and on the pastor pastoral gift that was raising up the body of Christ. Then in the 70s, it was all about the teacher. How many were in the body of Christ back in the 70s? Wave your hand at me. Some of you aren't old enough, I know, okay? I'm barely old enough. Barely old enough, okay? But in the 70s, when I came into the kingdom, it was all about the teacher. And this is when people started carrying cassette recorders and they would actually sit and Sunday morning services, believe it or not, I know we've got a two-hour service, but the, the preachers in many churches would teach two and three hours every Sunday morning. Take a big, deep breath and say, an hour is long enough. No. <laughs> but people were so hungry to be taught the word. Kenneth Hagin, Kenneth Copeland, um, Derek Prince, great Bible teachers, and people would begin to receive from the Word. So in the 70s, God restored the gift of the, the, of the teacher to the body of Christ, and people began to love to learn the Word of God. We should still love to learn the Word of God. I'm just talking about what's being restored. In the 80s, this place right here was actually ground zero of the restoration of the ministry office gift of the prophet. Bishop Hammond, my husband's father, actually pioneered and spearheaded teaching on the prophetic, which we're going to talk a little bit about today. Um, but he really spearheaded that and brought an understanding that there are modern-day prophets. And not only are there modern-day prophets, but there's an entire prophetic generation that God is raising up that he expects, God expects every single one of us to hear his voice. And so we started holding conferences that taught on the ministry gift of office of the prophet, and we had op opportunities to learn and to teach people how to operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. How many are glad that we're not living where we were 30 years ago? But now, even, you know what, I heard last year, or the year before last, that the Methodist Church 
in Niceville actually conducted a Wednesday night series on hearing the voice of the Lord and, and activating the gifts of the Spirit in a Methodist church. Come on, guys. This is awesome. Amen? And then in the 90s, the emphasis was on the apostles who um, are not just at the top of the pyramid. That's really not what it is. Apostles are part of the foundation. They move in signs, wonders, miracles. They build, they establish church government. They establish uh, and plant churches. But there's also an entire company of apostolic people because the word apostle means sent ones. How many know that every one of us should be sent into our community, into our workplace, wherever it is that we are. Amen? So I want to revisit for just a second, as this is our last day talking about our core values, I want to revisit Ephesians 4, 11, and 12 for just a minute. God gave these five, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of, of the ministry. And why I'm emphasizing it that way is because even 20 years ago, this was our understanding. Well, a prophet is somebody that prophesies. An evangelist is somebody that wins souls. A pastor is somebody that counsels and nurtures and cares. A teacher is somebody that knows how to make disciples and teach the word. An apostle is somebody that moves in signs, wonders, and miracles. Isn't that what we all think? Okay, but that's not actually what Ephesians 4, 11, and 12 says. This is what it says. God gave these five to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. The whole goal of that scripture is saints doing the ministry. The whole goal of that scripture is to be well-equipped saints where you've had impartation from a pastor so that when you're out in the community and you're dealing with somebody that's in, in trauma or trouble, you have the pastoral heart that you can counsel and nurture and care, that you have the ability to know the word of God so that you can make disciples. It didn't say these five-fold ministers make disciples. He said to all his disciples, go make disciples. Okay, um, an evangelist is supposed to train us to win souls, not win all the souls, but train us to be soul winners. A well-equipped saint knows how to win souls. The goal of this scripture is to have an army of well-equipped saints. Well-equipped saints that also know how to hear the voice of the Lord and at the drop of a hat say, you know what, I think God's saying this to you so that you can minister out in the highways and the byways so that you can minister the word of Lord, the word of life wherever you go and that you also carry that apostolic anointing that you can actually move in signs, wonders, and miracles. Matter of fact, I want to remind you, and we said this in prayer today, Mark chapter 16 actually says this, these signs will follow Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. No. That's not what it says, right? These signs will follow who? Those that believe. If you believe, wave your hand at me. These signs will follow those that believe. That's each and every one of us, right? And so our goal for each and every one of us is to be a well-equipped saint, so that we know how to win souls, we know how to make disciples, we know how to give godly counsel, we know how to give the word of the Lord, and we know how to move in the supernatural no matter where we go in the earth. Amen? How many believe that that's what God's calling us to? God's calling us to that as a body. God's calling us to that individually so that we can rise up in a place of maturity.